Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here today for our first uh, Capital Improvement Plan open house. I'm really glad to see a lot of folks in the room. I should let you know also that we are uh, recording this on video so that we can post it to the county's website so that folks who can't attend today uh, will be able to participate virtually uh, later, uh, later this month. And we'll, so we'll have that video up for, for the next month or so so that people can get that information online. Um, I'm James Yorkie. I think I know most of you. I'm the county administrator. Really happy to be here in this role and happy to be working with and for you all. Um, as you know, we have uh, in the past worked to develop a capital improvement plan. Uh, there was work back in 2017, 2018 that did result in the development of a plan. Um, and for various reasons, that plan didn't move forward. One of the central elements of it was the construction of a new jail. Um, and I'm just going to start by telling you that we have no plans to build a new jail. just want to make that really, really clear. Um, but we do have a lot of needs across all of our facilities. And the purpose of this exercise is really to prioritize those needs with input from you all. Um, another factor in the development of the last capital improvement plan is that there wasn't really a lot of public engagement. Um, and so when the plan was brought forward, um, it was news to a lot of people. And it's clearly the case in Cook County that people want to be involved. People want to know what county government is doing. They want to have a voice in informing our processes and our planning. And that's why you're here today. And that's why we set up these three sessions today so that people could come here to, to learn the information that we've collected, um, to uh, ask questions about it, to help us start the process of prioritizing our needs. So that's, that's really the goal here today. And um, the way this is gonna be set up, we're gonna do a short presentation here at the beginning. Um, and then uh, after about 15 or 20 minutes, we're going to break up. We've got four stations set up. And we're gonna ask folks to go from station to station. There are different uh, topics at each station. And we'll have staff both from, from the county and also from our consultant, CRBPS, uh, to, to share information about those topics, to ask questions, and to get your feedback on what we should be thinking about as we put together the capital improvement plan. So that is really the, the goal of the day. We've got two hours blocked for this open house. Um, you can feel free to leave before noon if you need to. Um, but I'm hoping that we'll have a lot of vigorous discussion and uh, get a lot of feedback from you. The idea is that the feedback that you provide today, we will use to inform the development of the capital improvement plan. And we're going to come back in the first part of next year to share with you the information that we've collected and how it's informing the development of the CIP. So that's what we're doing today. Um, we, again, we have three sessions, um, and I'm hoping that we get good attendance at each of those sessions. Um, and we still have openings for the 2 p.m. and the 6 p.m. sessions. So if you know f folks who are interested in this topic and want to provide feedback, um, let them know that they can still attend later today. So um, that's kind of, uh, I guess, the opening. And Chad, did I miss anything important that I was supposed to cover? I think you're good. I think the big thing is the survey's at the back. Make sure you fill out a survey before you leave today. Yeah. That would be super helpful. So, and, and just, just to, uh, we, so the stations are set up in sequence. So we have the first station kind of back by the auditor's office. Second station is out here in the lobby. The um, third station is here in the ITV room, which is a meeting room across the hallway. Uh, and then the fourth station is right here. And again, we'll have staff at each station to uh, provide more information and uh, field questions and get your feedback. So that's, that's the goal of the day. And before I turn it over to Chad Rickle from CRBPS, do you have any questions? Yeah, I do. Please. Uh, two. One is if we have questions during the presentation, do you want us to ask or to hold them till the end? I would say if you could hold them to the end, that would be great. Or, or we can, we'll be at the stations and you can talk to everybody individually at the stations as well. And we can have a conversation then. But okay. Yeah, the, the goal is to provide an overview here and then to have deeper conversations at those, at those stations. So, but if, if you want to ask a question for the benefit of the group, that, that would be okay too. Okay, 
had the other question was, you said the first station is at the auditor's office, and I don't know where the auditor's office we'll, is. We'll guide people. Okay. So, right. yeah, we'll show you where it is. It's in front of this building right ah. over there. Yeah. And station 2 is right up here. So, and, and again, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for your time today. This is really important. Um, we're going to have to make investments in, in county buildings, and it's really important that we do that with the feedback from the community. So thank you for committing the time to being here today. And with that, I will turn it over to Chad Rickle. I'll grab the mic from Okay. Thanks everyone for being here. I'm Chad Rickle. I'm a principal at CRBPS. I'm going to introduce my team real quick before I jump into the PowerPoint. So sorry to be moving. I know I'm supposed to stay over here. Um, Kaya, why don't you stand up? So this is Kaya Roy. She heads the, uh, the, the architectural assessments that we've been doing. Uh, Terry Ryla is an architect. She is leading the space needs uh, assessments for all the county departments. And then Lucas Mason, he is the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing uh, lead on all of the facility assessments that we've been doing. And I'm essentially the project manager of the project, working directly with James and Brian and the Cook County team. So I wanted to introduce you a little bit to uh, who we are as a company. So we provide three core areas of service. We are a small firm based here in Minnesota. Uh, we do facility site asset management, which is essentially what we're doing uh, here in Cook County. We also provide building science services and high performance architecture. So the question always is, why, why do we do this? Or what is the, uh, what, why is this important? And I'll shorten it to call it FSAM. That's the acronym that we use for facility site asset management. Um, and the joke that we kind of say is, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. So having a plan, uh, having data, helps to inform what the future looks like and helps to inform, so helps to inform everyone to know what, uh, give you a snapshot and an idea of buildings. So we, we inventory the 25 buildings and we inventory every single system within that building. We take that information and we put it into an online FSAM software tool and all of that information is housed in that tool and can be there for as long as it needs to be, and, and we can change it and update it, and it can be used uh, for, for future CIP. Uh, number five, it, it's ongoing and living because the data is in this software. It's updated constantly. It's updated that we have RS means costs for each of the systems for replacement costs, so we know what the industry standard is for that. Those are updated three times a year in the software. So, um, and, and it's geographically based. So it, it's helpful to have accurate information in regard to what's in the software. Um, and then lastly, it's a process to maintain the buildings, uh, the building assets, and to avoid living in a deferred maintenance world, uh, which can be very costly. So we want to avoid those deferred maintenance costs and have a plan uh, for the future. This is a, just a map of, uh, of all the different buildings. So a list of the 25 buildings in the top right, a snapshot of where they're located across the county, and then a, another snapshot there in regard to the facilities that are here in town, just to give you an idea of, of all the different buildings and where, where they're located. So when we do facility site asset management, we focus on, uh, and it's usually a very heavy lift, or we try to focus on the six different uh, performance criteria that we have identified. However, for uh, in this process right now, we are solely focused on the two parts on the top uh, left there, which is the conditions of the facilities and then also the functionality or the space needs of all of the county departments. And we have a very rigorous approach, or in my opinion, I'll call it a rigorous approach. We, uh, and I'll walk everybody through that, but the team that I introduced, we, we are boots on the ground, getting, getting accurate data. Um, so what we do is I'm gonna go top left and work my way across and then down. So we do a systems approach. We are inventorying every single piece of, everything that's attached to the building. So the structure itself, the superstructure, the substructure, the carpet, the paint, the mechanical electrical plumbing systems, the windows, the doors, every single system that's attached to all 25 facilities is inventoried in the software. 
We do a condition assessment and documentation. We take on condition assessments and documentation. That is a flattened 360 degree photo because we walk through every single facility and snap a 360 degree photo of every aspect of that building. That helps us to be able to reference it later on, take it back to our offices when we're doing the calculations and making sure that we're getting everything as dialed in and accurate as we possibly can. On the bottom left, you'll see an actual model of the building that we're, we're standing or sitting in today. So we, do a, we create a 3D model of all of the facilities in the county. Um, essentially, we're taking a 2D floor plan if it exists. If it doesn't exist, we're taking field measurements, uh, we're taking our photos, and we're creating an as-built model which gives us accurate building calculations for all of the county's facilities. And then this on the bottom right-hand side here, you'll see this is just a snapshot of the software. So we list all of the different assets, all of the different systems. They're all listed in that software. They're housed in the software. And like I said, they're there to be updated. They're there to provide any type of reporting in real time. Um, and uh, it's just to give you an idea of how we use that. So that's essentially the rigor. It's more in, it's more in depth than that, but I, I do think uh, it, do, it does speak to our process quite well. So at this point in the process, we have, as I've stated, uh, as I stated a little bit earlier, we've, uh, we've spoken to all the departments uh, in the county. We have assessed all of the facilities, boots on the ground, created models. And a big thing for us right now is to gather what we call a facility condition index or an FCI. Uh, we do live in an alphabet soup world, our CRBPS acronym as a company, and uh, we get into the metrics with the acronyms. But FCI is a standard which gives us a snapshot of what the condition of the facility is in real time. And then we actually have on the bar graph on the right hand side, all of the buildings, uh, all, of, all the facilities in the county that are listed from left to right, basically good to getting, getting higher with FCIs. And you'll notice that we've got the courthouse, the, law, the main law enforcement facility, uh, and then, you know, the museum is in there. So we've, you know, you, there are buildings that have higher FCIs, which means that there are replacements that are coming up. Um, this will, this gives you a, just a snapshot of where the facilities currently stand in regard to their conditions. One thing I do like to be clear about in regard to who we are as a company and how we operate is that we will not provide architecture or engineering final design services uh, when we do assessment work. So we were hired to do, uh, to help the county with the facility study and to help with, with CIP services. We are not in the business of trying to score any design contracts at the end of this. Yes, we have our engineers and architects on our team, but it's a conflict of interest for us to provide the county with the data regarding your facilities and then expect that we're gonna design any project in the future. So it allows us to remain clear-minded and impartial. We can advocate for a transparent planning process and we can analyze the data to set future facility goals. And then if there is a project in the future, we can help provide that data to the team that is going to do the design work and, and uh, do that work. But we're not gonna try to score any other work beside, beyond what we are uh, doing at this time. So next steps, uh, as James mentioned, today is what we're calling engagement session number one. There will be a second engagement session later on in, or at the beginning of the, uh, into the new year, I'll, I'll call it. Um, so get through the holiday season into the new year and we'll, we'll set a, a date for that. Um, before we get there, we do wanna integrate the feedback that we're gonna receive today um, and in the future. So the surveys are in the back. Please make sure you fill out a survey before you leave. It's also gonna be on the, the county website uh, through the month of December, I believe, right, James? Through the month of December. So uh, the survey results are gonna be important. We wanna hear from the community. We wanna, today we wanna provide as much information to you as we possibly can. Uh, we do also need to review and analyze the data more in depth to help inform the future CIP. Uh, and that will allow us then to get to that engagement session number two where we can do a deeper dive and provide everybody with more, uh, a more, more detailed information in regard to where we are at as we move through the process. So after that, we're gonna, we'll be able to provide facility study and CIP services reporting as we go forward because that data is always gonna be available in the software. 
And then we can do ongoing reporting, facility data updates as needed, so we can update the, the, update the information as any updates are made. And we're also available to, to assist in any type of pre-design or planning help uh, to give everybody an idea of what the future looks like and help with that type of planning. So that is the gist of who CRBPS is as a team, uh, what we're here uh, doing at, the time, at this time, and a little bit of a snapshot of what the future holds. So um, from here on out, we'll, we can jump into the the stations. So. Sounds great. Thanks for the presentation, yeah. Chad. Yeah. I'm just going to stand close to the microphone so, and hopefully gotcha. that, that will get it. <laughs> um, so for folks who haven't signed in yet, we, we would like you to sign in and provide an email address. We, we do want to follow up with you all uh, <clears throat> probably February of, of 23 regarding a follow-up meeting. Um, what we'll be doing there, as Chad said, is to share the feedback that we got here and how that's being used to develop the plan. Um, I also want to recognize Brian Silence is here in the room. He's the head of our maintenance department. He and his team do an exceptional job of keeping our buildings up and running. Um, but they've been doing that at kind of a deficit, um, which is that we don't really have good systems in place right now to, to manage information, to, for example, to, to check replacement schedules, that kind of thing. And a big part of what we're doing now, it's not just collecting the data that Chad talked about, it's managing it, it's using it. And so that's really a big part of the next steps, is how do we, how do we use this information to better manage our buildings to reduce long-term operating costs? Um, there's a history here in Cook County of kind of under-investing in buildings at the front end through cost-cutting, and then ending up with, with buildings that are really expensive and really difficult to maintain. And that's really what we want to get away from. We want to get into a place where um, we, we know what we have, we know when things are going to need to be replaced, we know how much it's going to cost, and so that we can be more intentional about, about budgeting for, for those expenses. And that's really um, what it comes down to. I also want to recognize we do have a couple of members of our Budget Advisory Committee uh, in the room, uh, Liz and Mike, and it's, I think those are the only two right here. But anyway, um, <coughs> We're really involving our budget advisory committee in this process, and they, in fact, were responsible for reviewing the uh, submissions that we got in response to our RFP to recruit a firm to do this work. And they were very emphatic that they wanted to make sure that whoever we got for this job was not going to be in a position of profiting at the back end of the work by, by getting projects. And so that's why Chad made that point, and that's, that's important to us as an organization. We want a firm that's going to be an advocate for us as an organization and not be working with an ulterior motive in terms of getting work at the uh, end of the project. So that's where we are. We do have four stations set up. Um, the first station is going to be back by the auditor's office. For those of you who are not familiar with the building, we'll lead you back there. Um, with the number of people that we have in the room, I think it might be good to kind of break people up a little bit. We'd like to keep the groups fairly small so that we can have conversations, so that there's an opportunity to ask questions. Um, so I'm thinking maybe if, if we can just, I don't know if we want to count off or maybe just, I don't know. Or, or maybe, yeah, that's a great suggestion, Liz. Maybe we just like divide the room in Section half. Up. Yeah. And, and this half goes to station one first, this half goes to station two first, and then we can kind of swap. Um, and, and again, you can stay as long as you like. We, we hope that there's gonna be a lot of good discussion, that you find the information interesting, that it spurs a lot of thought and a lot of questions. Your feedback is vitally important in this process. That's why we're here today, is to hear from you. So, um, you know, we, we want to have a lot of good discussion, and uh, if you have any questions at any point, um, Chad and his team are here. We've got myself and a number of county staff, and we are more than happy to, to answer any questions that you might have. Before we break up into groups and go to the stations, I want to make sure if there are any questions that anyone wants to ask for the benefit of the group, that you have a chance to do that. Anyone? And I'll just add real quick then, Stations one and two will be the CRBPS team members, and then station three will be some department heads from the county, and then station four will be James and uh, county commissioners that are gonna be handling next steps and uh, any questions that you have regarding that, so.
except like at some point they're gonna fail. Like a spoiler only has so many years in it. We're lucky when they exceed their expected life So like needs a new roof. Yes, right. Yeah, oh, right. And so that information is all compiled in results with an FCI decision, facility condition index. That number is one way to rank where things have to start getting addressed. So when we break it down by building, the community center restroom is in a very good position right now. And that's not to talk about the space needs. Some of these office spaces are needing more room. But this is just talking about the condition, the level of condition. And so as we move along, it gets a little bit worse and worse based on how old things are when they need to be re refurbished. Does that make more sense now? Yeah. Yeah. So when yeah. you say level of condition, so yeah. using the community center restaurant as an example, it means there's nothing that's going to need any fixing. Right. Immediately, it looks like it's in really good shape. So immediately uh, is how long? Well, it'll depend. Um, I don't know that day. I mean, when you look at all of these that we're looking at today, yes. based on today, yes, that's right. All of these, like, a snapshot today. Point six three needs some major repairs today. Point sixteen, not so much compared to the okay. Yes, exactly. And it is just a snapshot of today. So in time, the model that we use, the software, it ages appropriately. So as the building gets older, we start realizing, okay, this is generally when we start wanting to repaint and that carpet's going to have to get replaced. Those types of things are all accounted for. When we say systems, that's what we're talking about. Things that are attached to the building. So the roof. The roof. The windows. The, yeah, exactly. And so, yes, in time, like, if we were to come back in five years, these numbers are going to be different because different buildings age at a different rate, depending on when things got replaced. So they're not all going to have new roofs. So getting back to one of your comments about space yeah. is that also part of your assessment is beyond the physical? Is it beyond the but what the needs are as well projected That's, to be? Yeah, and that information is not incorporated in this, that, that, that right? It's a separate step. Yeah. And so, right. It is part of what you're assessing, though, right? Exactly. Okay. So I've had the opportunity to talk to all the different department heads, or people in the departments, and I have a sense now of what departments are needing more elbow room because there's people sitting on each other and they can't talk on the phone about confidential issues because it's so loud in there. Or the, um, the offices that start becoming the accumulation point for all the things that they don't have storage space for. So people have you know uniforms and PPE and fire extinguishers in their office where they might better be stored more centrally or that type of thing. I didn't find anyone who had too much space. <laughs> I have to say that when I did walk through and talk to people, every single one of them was like, we're fine, we're fine. And you know, I'm kind of like, moving around things because they're kind of tightly packed and they're like no this is this is okay so generally the staff is not necessarily complaining or requiring more of anything they're very comfortable but as an outsider i can see what's needing to be addressed a little bit better so i have a question yeah. based on the there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's use the worst building, the Culver Town Hall. Is that, are you going to set up a timeline? Like it needs a roof now, yes. but we can get by with painting next year. Oh, yes, we do. So it's not saying you're going to take the Culver Town Hall and renovate it um, because it's the worst building. Yes, that's exactly you're right. Gonna, you're going to set up some sort of a look out for three years or five years or ten years on what needs to be done. Right. Am I getting that? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly right. I use this one example. I'm from Duluth, 
And if you're familiar with the deck, the entertainment center there, they've got a large sheet of ice, and that system was never accounted for. They didn't have a timeline on exploration of systems. And so when their ice creating machine died, they were just like, what? That's a very expensive replacement. And it was during the ice season, hockey games stopped because they had nothing. So that's an extreme example, but that's what we're trying to get ahead of, is telling you, you're right, this roof, whatever building, whatever it is, this is when it needs to be addressed. Yeah. Can you say more about when uh, your firm will be presenting more information on the space needs and projection projected as well as phase two? Yeah, it's more of phase two. We have collected it, right? And so I have that information. Um, there will be a report that will be coming out prior to the second um, public engagement meeting. But we didn't want to influence things yet. We want to hear from people what their concerns are. I mean, it, we're not proposing building any new buildings. And if I'm hearing someone say, um, you know, I've been in this building and it really is a problem. The community center doesn't flow correctly. I'm always confused when I walked in there. Walk in there, I don't know where to go. If what, those are the kind of things I want to hear in regards to space planning. Right. So today I'm just collecting information, and the focus really is on this the facility condition index.